And well guys, it seems that yesterday's presentation, the Computex 2024, at least the AMD's presentation, was all about one thing. AI, 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 AI hardware. And since most of us consumers don't really care about AI, laptops or so on, it seems like they were actually making a presentation for the investors, which is most likely the case, instead of making a presentation for the users, for the consumers, people that will actually buy their products, they were mostly aiming at investors and people that will buy their products in terms of of server, server side and that's exactly why I'm making this video kind of making a recap of the live stream that I made yesterday as well or some hours ago I'm terrible. I'll kind of show you all that you want to know about the Ryzen 9000 series because for most of you that's actually what you want to know so let's start with AMD Ryzen 9000 series the world's most powerful consumer processor yeah almost as powerful as today's sponsor today's video sponsor is GVG Mo. Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. So guys, AMD Ryzen 9000 series, and by the way, sorry if you're hearing kind of a humming, um, that's because of my fan, it's really, it's like, it's 27 degrees inside, I don't have AC, no, and if I don't have the fan turned on, I will actually start sweating like a pig. <laughs> you're teasing me, you naughty naughty. <laughs> Anyway, let's go. Then we have next generation high performance CPU core and even compared to the previous presentations where they showed more, for example, they showed differences going from Zen 4 to Zen, to, from Zen 3 to Zen 4 with a double cache and so on, but they didn't specify much. I really, really liked what they did when they showed the differences in between Zen 2 and Zen 3. That was actually pretty nice where they showed the core complexes, basically the CCX, the CCD, and they showed how they, and the CLD and they basically showed how they changed in between Zen 2 and Zen 3 even on the core and the I.O. And here they just say parallel dual pipe front end for improved branch prediction accuracy and latency meaning that once again we'll have less, uh, less latency on the branch prediction and so on which is one of the most important things and then we have higher throughput with wider pipelines and vectors that can also help in lots of games even with the same cache and so on and then we have deeper window size across design for more parallelism which is also important in order to, to kind of scale the same architecture in several CPUs. Then we have next generation high performance CPU core with up to two times, up to two times instructions bandwidth for front end instructions because once again, because of this that we see here, the improved branch prediction and so on. Then we have the data bandwidth, which is really important, L1 to L2 and L1 to FP. So with Zen 4, they increased uh, the L2 cache to double from half megabyte to one megabyte per core, meaning that, for example, the eight cores version went from like four megabytes L2 to eight megabytes L2, and that also helped a lot in some scenarios. And now they are not increasing the L2 cache, but they are increasing its bandwidth which is really, really important in some scenarios, especially in high FPS gaming. And then we have an AI performance increase for AI and AVX 512 throughput. And people don't think much about it, about it actually, but this will actually help a lot in some scenarios, especially emulation. Zen 4 already brought lots of performance gains emulation sided because they added the AVX 512 instructions. And for those, for those tasks like emulation and so on, it does make a huge difference in terms of performance because AVX 512 makes the emulation works, work much better, sorry. And now with uh, an improved throughput on the AVX 512, I mean emulation PS3 emulators, PS4 emulators, I don't really know if they exist already, but those emulation services or those emulation devices with these CPUs will work much better. Moving to the next one, we have Zen 5 IPC uplift for PCs. Now we're finally seeing an average IPC uplift of 16%. And remember, we are not talking about final performance. That's what people fail to understand. The final performance might actually be better 
or might be worse. We're talking about just about, uh, just about IPC, which are instructions per cycle, meaning that the, the CPU Zen 4, Zen 5 here, the, the ones tested, are exactly at the same frequency. And at the same frequency, uh, the newer ones are 10% faster in Far Cry, 11 in Handbrake, Kraken 12%, up to 35% with Geekbench 5.4. And for example, for people that use Blender, we have a massive, a massive increase of 23% in Blender, which is a lot. And for example, for people playing League of Legends, uh, since League of Legends don't really, or doesn't really care much about cash, for example, but it does care about latency and so on. And I believe that's the reason why we have 21% increase. I'll get there when I start testing the CPUs. Now we have the Ryzen 9 9950X processor, the best for gamers and creators, which I agree if priced correctly. 16 cores, 32 threads as usual, with up to 5.7 GHz boost, 80 MB of L2 plus L3 cache and 170 watts TDP, which is exactly the same. Compared to Zen 4, the specifications are basically the same, but I'll, I'll even check here, I'll even check here, just let me grab my phone, and it is exactly that, basically 5.7 GHz boost, uh, 170 watts TDP, and yeah, that's basically it exactly the same. And we do have some really interesting ones with productivity, with content creation, productivity, and so on. We have ProSign Office Benchmark, which is actually a pretty decent benchmark. Then we have Photoshop with Budget, Cinebench, Handbrake, Blender. And once again, compared to the 4900K, both at the same, uh, with the same RAM frequencies and so on, because if you want to compare CPUs properly, you have to use the same RAM frequency and the most stable system that you can get in order to have the most reliable benchmarks. That's how benchmarking works. Um, there are some variables, of course, but usually that's it. And in Blender, the difference is just insane. Remember that the 4900K actually has lots of cores. It has 32 threads, of course, but remember that it's using 24 cores because it has the E cores. So, in theory, the e-cores from Intel should be faster than the multi-threading, than the simultaneous multi-threading um, from AMD because we're talking about logical cores, or in this case threads, versus real physical cores. Even though they are, they are not as fast as the performance ones, they're still there and they're faster than the, mul the multi-threading logical ones. Um, but yeah, still, it's 2432 versus 1632, and even in that scenario, take these with a grain of salt, but according to AMD, up to 56% more, uh, more performance in Blender, up to 55% more performance in Handbrake, and even in Cinebench we have 21% more performance, it is quite a lot. And even if we go to gaming, well, we have up to 4% more in Borderlands. Hitman 3 is a game that usually performs really, really good on Intel CPUs. And even in that scenario, we have 6% more performance than the 4900K. Cyberpunk up to 13% more. And if we go to Horizon Zero Dawn or Dota 2 or even F1 2023, we have up to 23%, which is really really a big difference, especially since we're talking about a CPU that consumes less power overall in idle, in gaming, in productivity, especially in productivity, and performs much better. Especially in productivity, once again, performs much better at a way lower power draw, and that makes a lot, a lot of difference. As for the Socket AM4, we have 145 CPUs and APUs model up to date, in uh, the socket AM4 since 2016 and going strong. We have Zen, Zen 2, Zen 3, and the 3DB cache technology, APUs, CPUs, everything. And believe me, uh, the socket AM4 is almost undying. It's unbelievable that AMD is still releasing CPUs for socket AM4 almost 10 years after. Well, at least eight years after, of course. It's insane as they will still support it in 2024. It's insane. As for the Socket AM5, we already have 38 CPUs and APU models uh, because we have the 8000 series APUs, uh, like the 8400F that I'll be testing soon. And now they actually, uh, they actually officially stated that they will be extending the longevity commitment through 2027. And we already have Zen 4 in it. We have Zen 5 with the AMD 3DB cache technology. We'll most likely have Zen 5 with 3DB cache as well. And we'll most likely have Zen 6. And then it will go 
to AM6. Most likely, we don't really know. As for the 9000 series processors, uh, they are officially coming in July 2024. We have, we have four of them releasing uh, firstly, which is basically Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, Ryzen 9, and Ryzen 9. And one of the things, uh, we, we'll be talking about the, um, the cache and the TDP because that's a very important point, very important. Um, but one of the things that I can't really understand is why AMD seems to be kind of ignoring the lower end, the lower end CPU parts. We have the 8000 series, which are basically APUs, but in terms of CPUs, we have none. They are just waiting for people to, if they really want the lower end, to get the, the, the early generation and not the newer one. Maybe that's what they're thinking because they're still selling lots, lots of AM4 CPUs for the lower end. Once again, 5600X, uh, they're selling, for example, the, the X3D CPU, especially with a 5700X3D, which is a very good CPU for the price. That's why they're not making the lower end Ryzen's, I believe. But still, we have the Ryzen 9 9600X with six cores, 12 threads. They still didn't increase the core count. I believe that will come with Zen 6. 5.4 gigahertz maximum boost, exactly the same. 38 megabytes cache, exactly the same but 60 watts TDP. And this is the most important point here, 65 watts TDP. Instead of having like 105 or 95 watts TDP, we now have 65 watts TDP, meaning that at the same frequency, because we have the same frequency, we will have a faster CPU than the 7600X faster while consuming less power and having much better temperatures. And maybe, Maybe if we tweak it a bit, maybe we can achieve even higher frequencies and le that lead to an overall better performance. Now we went once again from 105 watts TDP to 65 watts TDP. And this means that we'll have a, a faster CPU than the 7700X, a faster CPU, especially in multi-threading, as we saw due to AVX 512 and so on, uh, a way faster CPU in multi-threading, a faster CPU in gaming while consuming less power and having much better temperatures. For me, it's a win-win. The Ryzen 9 9900X is actually one of the most interesting ones here because uh, we have this, the same thing once again, but the TDP just decreased a lot. It went from 170 watts because the, the 7900X had 170 watts as well to 120 watts. So we have a 50 watts TDP decrease, and for higher end CPUs like these ones, the 12 cores, 24 threads, in terms of power draw and in terms of temperatures, it will make a huge difference in this scenario. So basically, better performance, lower temperatures, lower power consumption. Win-win if the prices are right. And now we have more AI crap. AI, 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 AI. And yeah, I knew I saw this. Uh, I had the briefing here, but somehow in Computex, they didn't show it. So we have the info, but they didn't show it. And I don't really know why, but we have the AMD X870 and 870 chipsets with USB 4.0 standard on all motherboards. All these motherboards will bring USB 4.0 and they will bring PCI generation five on both graphics and NVMe in all slots. So that's one of the things. And once again, like I told you, higher AMD Expo memory clock support on these motherboards. And of course the FCLK will increase as well. And these XT are basically higher binned versions of the normal processors like the 5800X and the 5900X. Now this is strange once again. AMD has been doing some really shitty naming recently, especially for example with the 7600 and 7600XT where they should be calling it 7600 and 7616 gigabytes because they're exactly the same card apart from the VRAM. And now they are actually, instead of calling this 5950XT, 5950XT, exactly, because it has 16 cores and 32 threads, they actually called it 5900XT. But instead of having 12 cores and 24 threads, it has 16 cores and 32 threads. So they are basically, <laughs> I don't really know what they're doing here, but it is kind of messy. And then we have the 5800XT as well. 
yeah, 5800 XT uh, with 8 core 16 threads. So this one is right, but this one should be called like 5950 XT. Double the cores and threads, but they have the same TDP. And the thing is that they include the AMD Wraith Prism cooler. I believe that they had lots of, of dice there, 7 nanometer dice, and they had some uh, Wraith Prism coolers there. I have one here as well. And they just want to do the stock off, and they are selling them, or they will be selling them in July as well. Maybe that's it. As for the 5900 XT, high-end performance for gaming and for gamers and creators. Yeah, I don't really know what what thing they were using here, what GPU, what system, but I don't really, yeah, it's not happening. The 5900 XT, in terms of real CPU performance, is not outperforming the 13700K. Not in CPU-bound scenarios, only GPU-bound scenarios. And of course, if you're running a game that uses lots of cores, maybe, or if you're running productivity, maybe. But in gaming, it's hard to believe, really, really hard to believe. And the same applies to the 5800 XT. I mean, I have a 5600X, I have lots of processors, and for me it is hard to believe than the 5800 XT, unless they are doing some magical work there, it's hard to believe that the 5800 XT performs better than the 13600 KF, but I guess I'll have to wait and see. And yeah, we're now finally in the end of this video. Thank you very much if you watched it all. Uh, it really means a lot. Leave your like, Go to the comment section and let me know what you think about this. If you'll get a 9000 series, if you'll get an X870 motherboard. AI, 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 AI. What you'll get or not, I really want to know. And what do you think about the, the presentation? For me, the presentation was very, very poor. Compared to what I was expecting, it was very, very poor because it was AI, AI this, AI that. AI, 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 AI. Everything but what it, we wanted to see, which were Radeon cards and processors and we saw like five minutes of Ryzen processors some of these slides weren't even presented there which is a bummer um, like I'm showing you right now this one for example and <laughs> and yeah I mean I was kind of disappointed I just want to see how the processors work if they are really really better or not I guess I'll test them as soon as I can thank you very much for watching once again comment section and see you in the next video cheers Bye.